Yeah. All right, you freak biscuits. Welcome to episode 17 of Banged Up with Bruce Oldham. Got a little pain on the chest today for those of you guys watching. Don't worry. I will take a shower eventually. Um, on today's episode of the podcast, this is actually probably one of my one of my favorite ones because we got no bird. We got uh, Noah Porter McLennan, one of my like a really really good friend of mine, a good skiing buddy, and uh, just an all around amazing dude. He's been skiing for like probably since he can walk. Did his first double, I believe, when he was like twelve. So kid's been on it for a while. He's now currently competing on the national team. So we talk about that. We talk about uh, everything else he's been up to. He's been climbing towers, all this cool shit. And dude, uh, dude recently tore his ACL, unfortunately. So for all you guys out there in the skiing industry and other action sports, you know what that's like. Uh, it's It happens. It happens. And uh, he's taking it well. He's rehabbing hard. And we'll talk about that later on. But uh, yeah, I really hope you guys enjoy this podcast. It's an awesome one. Before we get into it, uh, I just want to say thank you to my sponsors. The podcast is brought to you by Four Sigmatic Mushrooms. And they just have, they have all the best shit. Look at this. This is coffee right now. Sipping on it. It's got chaga in it. Good for your brain. Promotes healthy brain activity. All that good stuff. Tastes awesome. Um, but they just have really good products that are healthy for you and all around good stuff. So if you guys want a discount on that, use uh, the coupon code THEKID at checkout, all caps. And uh, yeah, I think you get 25% off. Also, big shout out to my ski sponsors for the upcoming season. We got K2 and we got Vertica. And there's a couple more in the works at the moment, but those two are supporting me throughout the season. So thank you to them on the podcast. Give them a little shout out. We're going to keep doing that from here on out because, you know, you got to give back to the people that give to you. Anyways, with that being said, welcome to the podcast and uh, I hope you guys enjoy. Mwah! Welcome, creatures of all shapes and sizes, to Banged Up with Bruce Oldham, aka The Kid. This is an action sports podcast, the likes of which the world may never have seen before and may never see again. I hope you guys enjoy. It's good to have you on, no bird. All right, let's uh, let's get into the podcast, big guy. Happy to be here. Happy to see you, man. You look beautiful as ever. Nice blue shirt, looking great. You're growing the hair back out, eh? It's always been growing out. What are you talking about? Getting the nice bond going. I want to see some dreads this year. Dreads, man. <laughs> it would be pretty sick. It'd be definitely something interesting. Yeah, exactly. All right. Well, me and you were just talking off air a little bit. Uh, just not seeing how how you've been and how everything's going. Uh, seems like you've been doing good, man. You just been chilling, uh, rehabbing, hanging out, enjoying enjoying life and everything. But uh, I guess I'll just start this off with asking the first question. Just let the listeners know how you've been spending your quarantine, what you've been up to, how you've been staying, uh, staying active, getting after it still. How have I been spending my quarantine? Yeah, man. What have you been, uh, what have you been doing? Well, I was actually really lucky and fortunate during like the midst of the quarantine. I got to do my surgery, so I, I was posted for a while on the sofa. I was pretty much on that thing for two weeks straight, just yeah. uh, icing my knees, dealing with the pain, and then. Um, Slowly, so like I started to get better. I was doing some stretches. I was uh, starting to walk again. So for a good chunk of my quarantine, it was mostly just um, recovering from surgery. Yeah. So you got but, your you got your surgery done during the whole COVID stuff because, like, I know a lot of people's surgery and stuff got canceled because of that. Yeah, a lot of people did, and I got really fortunate. Like, I got really lucky that um, I, I went to a different hospital hospital outside of Ottawa. Yeah. And they were able to do my surgery there, so I got super lucky. Oh, nice. Lucky. Yeah, because I know it was a been a problem for a couple other people I know. They got injured and they couldn't get surgery or anything right now, which is a huge pain in the ass. And then, obviously, um, I know you, so you've been doing, like, you said you are hanging out with the, the friends of the college and stuff. You still climbing towers and all that nonsense, or trying to oh, yeah. just try to stay away from that? Before surgery, I was still climbing uh, some roofs and some cranes and stuff, but... Uh, Ever since the uh, surgery, and uh, I also ended up fracturing these two uh, bones here after surgery. <laughs> I was gonna say, um, I heard, I heard a rumor when I was at Maximize this week that you might have uh, rebroke your hand or wrist or something, or broke your hand or wrist or something. But I didn't want to bring it up because I didn't know if you wanted anybody to know or not. I didn't know if that was under the radar. I was kind of trying to avoid it from my coaches. I didn't want them to send me or anything. Yeah. But uh, 
they found out, and now it's like, I got surgery like three weeks ago, and it's okay. like, my hands are only 100% again. Yeah, dude, it looks a little puffy, a little swollen up. Oh, you think that's why he's just saying for like boxing a little bit. <laughs> How'd you do that? I did, I was, I was, I was on a sharp turn on my bike. I was going pretty quick, and my back tire just slid out on me, and I threw my hand out in front of me, and it took all the power, all the weight. Where were you biking? Just in town, or were you hitting yeah, trails? Town. Okay, I was gonna say hitting trails like that quick after surgery and stuff. Fucking monster. Uh, I'm not much of a mountain biker. No, dude, me either. That shit's terrifying. Ripping through the trees. <laughs> Absolutely insane, dude. Uh, I want to come crane climbing with you and like do that shit. That sounds awesome. Have you got caught? You haven't got caught or anything yet. Any close calls or no? Uh, not really, no, because we usually go pretty late at night, but I would be super down to try, like, doing a sunrise one. I think that would be super sick, you know, there. Yeah. Do you ever have to... Do you yeah, ever... Get some shots. Yeah, for sure. It'd be a, make an interesting vlog or something. Or just, like, shots in general. It'd be super sick. Maybe next time in Ottawa, I'll hit you up. Do you ever, have you ever, like, do you ever worry about that, though, getting caught, or just not? Oh, yeah, it's half the fun, though. Yeah, it's half the fun. So I'm sure you haven't been climbing since you hurt your hand, though, eh? No, I haven't. Good. Good boy. Good boy. You've been uh, rehabbing hard, though, right? Oh yeah, heavy every day. Sick. All right, dude. Well, let's get into let's get into your story, man. I know you forever, and uh, you're a really good friend of mine, good skier, and one of the boys. But um, nobody in the podcast. Uh, knows you as well as I do, so you might as well let him know about you. So, classic question, start off pretty much every vlog like this. Pretty basic, but uh, gets the people informed. So, um, how did you get into skiing? Where'd you grow up? And, uh, yeah, all that, all that good stuff. How did I grow up? Where'd you grow up? How'd you get into skiing? What kind of sports you played as a kid? Just a little background on you. Alrighty, so I was born and raised in Ottawa, Ontario, yep. which is where I live right now. And I grew up, uh, I started skiing at a very young age, because my parents owned a condo up at a ski club in Quebec called Mont Tremblant. Yep. And I, I would go up there every weekend, and we would just go skiing, because my mom loves skiing so much. And then I made my way into freestyle skiing at around six years old. Yep. When my dad brought me through a train park for the first time, and pretty much I went one run down there, and then I wouldn't want to go on any other run, so I got glued there. Yeah. And then I joined a freestyle club at Trauma when I was around eight years old, and started competing at like nine, and ever since then it's just been a, a whole roller coaster of competitions and training and skiing. Yeah, I was going to ask you, that was one of my next questions, because I actually do a little bit, I do a little bit of questions so I don't get completely fucking lost, because podcast and talking like this, not my strong suit, man, but that's what I'm working on it. Uh, anyways, yeah, so you've been competing for a long time, but that's way back in the day when Tromblon had like a super sick park. Like, their park was pretty cool. They had like pretty good rails, pretty good jumps, and now it's kind of gone downhill from there, but... Yeah, they switched ownerships, right? So yeah. I think... They were owned by Interwest or whatever, and then it switched. So then they took away the park patch, and now they, they have limits on how big they can build their jumps and stuff, so it's pretty brutal now, but I still love it there. It's still a good place to travel to homes. Yeah, for sure. So you still go there and ride, like, here and there in the winter? Yeah, as much as I can, right? Because we're always gone, we're traveling. Yeah, exactly. And stuff, so I don't get up there as often anymore, but it's still a good time once we're up there. Yeah, for sure. And I gotta ask, have you, you've obviously heard the infamous, uh, the infamous trombone story where the guy tries to jump two jumps? <laughs> I have heard it. Okay, I just had to make sure. Alright, yeah, so, Apparently he died, so. Yeah, apparently he tried to jump from one jump to the next and landed on the takeoff of the second jump. Did not even come close to making the landing. Uh, not ideal. I remember, um, uh, growing up, I used to actually compete. I don't think I ever competed against you in Timber Tours. But I remember going to Timber Tours and competing because there's age age groups in them. But competing and watching you do tricks that I was doing or better than I was doing, and I was like, "What the fuck?" He's this little Quebec kid just launching. But I remember watching a video because me and you went. We'll get into this in a second. But me and you went to um, Momentum together. That's how we first started. Hey, we. That's how we first got to. Uh, hey, how are you? Go ahead. Nice to see you. Uh oh. <laughs> Yeah, we're just doing a podcast. I, 
shown my own office. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. Um, yeah, anyways, but we first, like, kind of really got to know each other when we went to Whistler, but I was just getting that, like, what, what was, uh, when was the first double you did? What age? Because I remember it being, like, super young, and you just reefed around a dub flat on, like, some tall ball and jump. So, oh, yeah, my first double, I was in grade six, I remember. Grade six, you your first double. Yeah. That's insane. I wasn't even skiing until I was in grade 10. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's pretty funny. That's awesome. It's, 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 uh, it's that group you ski with, man. It's like they all get so fired up, and then as soon as one person does a double for the first time, everyone else gets all fired up and wants to do their own. So yeah, that was that back. Mentality. That was back in the day when like you, Phil, and all the other guys at the end of the season would build like a little jump, and everybody just launched for their camera and stuff like that. Yeah, exactly. But when I did my first double, it was actually when the ski was still open, and they still had some pretty prime jumps. Yeah. And we were all just launched. I remember just the day I did my first double flat. I think Phil. Phil tried his first uh, dub 10. Yeah, when Phil tried his first dub 10. pretty gnarly. Yeah, super gnarly, dude. That's a young age to be reefing around doubles, man. And it's good to see that. So, like, that's what's so cool about this sport, man. Like, people like me and you, like, completely different age groups, get into it at different ages, can get along just fine and shred together, which is sick. So, going off that, we our first, first time I really got to ski with you and hang out with you was the Whistler trip to Momentum, right? And you were on FSO yeah. with me? Yeah. Yeah, so we had the Freestyle Ontario, or Freestyle, yeah, it's Freestyle Can or Ontario, put together, with like, Fritz. yeah, with Jordan Fritz, put together, like, a little, like, momentum summer camp, and then convince all the parents to go, like, get their kids to go to momentum for a week, but not with the actual momentum camps, but with Freestyle Ontario, so me and Noah yeah. ended up there with me, him, Brain Wilmot, a couple other young ones coming up, and me and Noah just kind of got along well, because we both like to send and we weren't huge pussies like some of the other kids on there that just didn't, that were just getting into it. And we were probably more, the more advanced skiers. So we were just like running around to the village like, fuck, it was like five, six years ago, six years ago. Just doing flips off everything, rocks, everything like that, playgrounds. And then we'd go trampoline on this like sketchy trampoline, like above ground Olympic trampoline. Oh, I think it was so gnarly. Me and Noah are just out there trying to do tricks we've never done, just getting tossed. But, um. We got along really well because, for me, I really sucked at skiing at that point. Like, I was just learning my first course. Uh, Noah was, like, got, had that stuff dialed in, but we both had, like, really wanted to send. So we were the, always the kids. Like, I think I was, we skied Momentum six days. I think I learned one to two new tricks every single day at Momentum that, that year. Like, you were on one, that's for sure. You were on one, too, dude. We were, like... First lap of the day, we do front flips like through the park, and we have no clue what we're doing. We don't know. To, I don't know how to do a front flip. I still don't. We like, yeah, I remember that. We today, we'd try to figure out a rodeo, and you'd be like, "I think it's like this," and I'd be like, "Okay," and then I'd fucking send it. And you're like, "Want to try it, Misty?" We're like, "Yeah, sure. I think it's like this." And then we both just try it. If you try it, I'll try it, and like just just huck it and just like try to that. Those are some of my favorite times of skiing back in the day, like. Doing that, like, at, at, with you and stuff, and at Mount St. Louis with uh, all my buddies, like, Tamaj and Matthias and them. Just, like, hey, man, if you try this, I'll try this. And just saying, fuck it, what if I land? And just sending and just trying new things. So, yeah, I remember when you, were, when you sent it off the big jump. I think you did, like, a rodeo nine streaming. And we were with Matt Walker. And Matt Walker was like, <laughs> Yo, and that kid of slush, he would have just gotten me a letter. <laughs> No, I wasn't doing rodeo nines back then. I was doing straight up nine screamings. <laughs> pencil, pencil five four, five forty screamings, and then pencil out. I did a twelve sixty screaming semen, but like uh, on axis. So I did, I did five forty screaming semen on cross, and then did a switch nine in the air, just pencil, just hugging my, wrapping my arms, and just spinning. Yeah, that was ridiculous. Oh man. Oh, and I remember you trying to hug your meat off that. Uh... That loopy rail? Yeah, I was trying to do a misty out of that, and I just I didn't it didn't work. I'll, I actually have the oh, video somewhere. I'll I'll throw it in the podcast so people watching on YouTube, you can go check it out. It's fucking just getting tossed. I have a little edit in there. As good times, man. Anyways, after that, um, me and you kind of competed in Timber Tours one on one way. Did a little bit of stuff. We saw each other here and there competing, and uh, but then we both ended up on the Ontario team together. You ended up. Were you on the team? You were on the team a year after I got on, or the same year? Uh, I think we joined the same year. I think we joined the same year. Anyways, um, we had some really good times, man. We competed a lot. We got to ski a lot together. We got uh, just like dude, living in a house with 
I mean, you know as good as anybody, we were, we were animals back then. I definitely did not behave like any 16, 17-year-old kid should, and neither did anybody else. I don't know how anybody in FSO put up, put up with any of our shit, but we had some really good times. So, um, and really good trips too. So what's your, uh, what's your favorite trip slash like contest, like, or just overall, like just trip we took together with the team and what's your best memories from the team? So I got to be, either the, I think it was probably my first Oz trip, man. The first time we ever went to Australia, it was like the first time I had ever been away from home for that long. <laughs> and I was with like a whole bunch of group of guys. I'd never had an experience like that before. Yeah, that was, that was a whack one. Yeah, and then Brandon Blumhauer was there, too. Yeah. R.I.P. to the man. Yeah, rest in peace, Boomy. Ski in peace. It was super cool. I had to play, like, frisbee golf every day, and I got to ski Parisher, so I got only seen videos before. Yeah, and then me and you were just working on tricks at Parisher. You go in the train every day. It was so sick through the mountain. And then, like, just a different vibe. I wish we got out more and did, like, more things around Oz instead of just kind of hanging out in the house. But... Yeah, we did some we did some fun stuff. Me and Kyle had some food fights in the house. Ryland and Saxon had their little fight. <laughs> oh my god. That was a lot of good times. Yeah, we actually got after it because for those of you guys who know how we did it on the Ontario team is and it's like this on most teams almost. They do three training days on and then one day off. So the three training days you stay pretty like pretty chill, you go to bed at a decent time kind of just get ready to ski the next day but the, after the last day of skiing you have a ne- the day off the next day so everybody would just absolutely get plowed just we i don't know we were definitely under- oh my god dude i forgot about us trying to sneak into the bar did you did you end up going sneak into the bar in australia yeah because we all went in i used brandon's id and i got we got like everybody's ids got taken to the police station and we got kicked out of the bar after we got in yeah, because we all, no, we all got in, and then, like, we ordered a couple drinks, had a couple drinks, and, man, like, look how young I look now, it was, like, five years ago, I looked like I was two, and then, we all got kicked out, and all the IDs got pulled and taken to the police station, oh, my God, I forgot about that. Absolutely brutal. Yeah, good, I like that, good. Good trip, for sure. But don't think about a little mortgage, the, the water ramp camps were actually pretty sick as well, man. The water ramp... actually get up to the after, or, like, beginning, right? Yeah, the water ramp camps were fun, man, because, like, obviously water ramping was, like, the only way we were training back then. You don't have Maximize or anything, but Maximize is obviously a lot better training, but, like, after water ramps, you just tramp, hang out, go swim in the pool, send some cliff jumping stuff. We used to go to that one, I don't know where it was, but that one cliff jumping spot was super sick. And uh, just hang out at, um, what was the mountain again? Why am I forgetting the name? The mountain that we'd always stay at, like, in the... Stoneham. Stoneham, yeah, Stoneham. Oh my god, then we got all the Kyle and milk hunting stories to be attached to that. We'll save that for another podcast. Yeah, and remember they had that rock wall at the, at the place that one time? Yeah, yeah, I remember the rock wall very well. I have a video of me trying my first triple misty and landing... Right on my stomach. <laughs> that was not good. <laughs> Dude, yeah, and then the yeah, good times, man. I like the trips. All right, cool. Well, we'll get to the most unfortunate question of all, I guess. How's the knee doing? You feeling pretty good now? You you rehab? You starting to feel like you're getting back to normal? You feel good? We're like we're three months pretty much right now. Three months? And yeah, nice. And um, so pretty much what the physio told me how the knee works uh, after knee surgery is like when you get the surgery, your ACL is actually pretty strong because you have a fresh tendon in there. Yeah. But then as it starts healing, it gets weaker and weaker and weaker because it's healing. Yeah. And then once it's fully healed, it's kind of at its bottom, which is like around three months. Yep. And then it starts working its way back up to getting stronger again. So like. Even though my knee right now, it feels really, really strong, and like it almost feels normal, it's, it's still super weak. So I still have to be super careful with like when yeah. I'm running, like playing sports and stuff. I just have to be really cautious to make sure I, I don't have any slip ups, right? Yeah, but the fact that it's uh, feeling strong right now and it's at the weakest, and you're doing everything properly and you're rehabbing properly, you'll be fine. Yeah, it's, it's feeling good. I just still have to be careful 
stuff. Yeah. So yeah, I. I've heard a bit. I've been doing a little bit of cliff jumping carefully. Yeah, I've heard. And, uh, <laughs> I've heard you've been, been, you've been doing cliff jumping, stuff. but just landing on your stomach. Just doing the the what is it called when you? <laughs> The one, I, the one, I, no, I, I, I haven't been doing that stuff. Not the stuff that Bert does. Oh, I thought you've been doing that stuff just to avoid the knees. No, I've been just, I've been, I've been doing a lot of like front flips and half in my head. Oh, okay, yeah, I mean, that's better. <laughs> Hell yeah, dude! And then um, obviously I saw the video of what happened, but that was super, super fucking gnarly, man. So what? Just walk me through how that happened and what was going on that day. Like just, um, and if you want to talk about it. Like, it, no, I, I'm more than happy to talk about it. It was just like pretty uh, unlikely for me to like for it to happen that day. It was like a training. It was the morning of the comp at uh, Mammoth yeah. for the Nora. Yep. And we had to train that morning, and training went super good, man. I was doing right twelve, switch twelve, left twelve, and I was feeling ham, like feeling good. And uh, I, I, I laced my rails. Like, practice went really good, by the way. Like, it was chill, and then I had, my run was, like, five minutes after practice, so it was, like, pretty Perfect. much just, like, a, another practice run, right? Yeah, like, that's ideal. Super ice. But I, I think this is, like, the, one of the first times I was ever, like, actually doing a comp with music. Oh, really? So I was bumping, it was pretty loud, and, like, as soon as I laced my rails, I got, like, really pumped, because, like, that was the hardest part of my run. Yeah. So I was getting pretty pumped, and like it was super, super flat light, and the speed was pretty weird on that first jump. Yeah, I it heard. Was, like, it had a super, super long in run, mm -hmm. and like it, it had a pretty short landing, and it wasn't that big of a jump, so to do a double bonnet, you had to go pretty deep. Yep. And so I did my right 12, and it felt so sick. I did like right 7, and then I torqued 5, and like I felt the tweet safety in the air. Yep. And I was like, it's gonna be sick. And then like I put my feet down the land, right, and I looked. And I'm still like six feet in the air. So then I just like open up, spread out, and I just keep twisting and pretty much just land like in the splits and like just get absolutely destroyed. Yeah, it was super gnarly. I think I can I can throw the video in here for, again for people watching on YouTube, but I, I watched it and I was like, oh fuck. I was <laughs> that's a gnarly. Yeah. One of the weirdest parts about it is like when I landed, like I landed with my knees. Like, oh, like that, and yeah. I hit my tailbone really hard. Yeah. But when, when I landed, all the pain just shot straight to my tailbone because I didn't even think I hurt my knee. So, like, oh. all that pain went to my tailbone, so it hurt so bad. Yeah. And then I got up, and, like, everything kind of felt green and stuff, and I'd never felt like that before, so I knew something wasn't good. And I see down to my coach, and he kept me up, and, uh, got on the phone with the insurance to make sure I could go to the hospital and pretty much, so. <laughs> yeah. Damn, dude. Yeah, well, when I watched the video, I was just surprised you didn't do both knees. Like, it was gnarly. Yeah, it's true. In the video, honestly, it looks like my, my left knee took pain, like, took the worst in it. Yeah, but it was the right. Yeah, you just cut out for a second because the Wi-Fi is cancer. Pat's playing Fortnite. Podcast Pat is on the on the interwebs or something. <laughs> yeah, it's his day off. We're hanging out in his room, but I got the podcast in like his corner of the room. So, well, in my basement, but he's living here now. So, yeah. But uh, anyways, um, the season before this one, like even the, uh, leading up to this season, you did your first triple in Sass Bay, which is insane. I remember seeing that the switch triple to like the basement. That was fucked. But uh, you absolutely murdered it. You made it onto the Canadian uh, team. You're starting to compete in World Cups. Did you Did you compete in a World Cup? Yeah, you did. You competed in one or two, right? Yeah, I competed in three this year. Or two. <clears throat> so talk. Yeah, I competed in three this year. I went to the, Fran the one in France and yeah. the one in Italy. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. No, I remember that one. Um, so tell me about that. Tell me what, what's that like. Uh, what's the experience like? What's it like competing with all those big oh, dogs? Yeah. What's the courses like? All that shit. Well, the courses are, 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 are pretty similar to uh, Noram courses, I would say, despite that the rails are a little gnarlier uh, at a lot of them. Yeah. But the jumps are roughly the same size. Like, oh, really? Great. Smallish. Like that course is like one of the best courses you can ride, right? And like the jumps on that course are crazy, and like 
Yeah. All the jobs are dustable though and stuff, so they build them to, for what they want to see, right? But yeah, exactly. The, the level of competition is, is crazy. It's like, you have to land, and like the best run you, like for me at least, I'd have to, I try to land like the best run I ever landed before and like still not make bottom. So yeah. It's like, it's, the competition's crazy. Yeah, that's fucked. So what was the coolest uh, course you hit this year? Or, I guess last year? Oh, definitely Italy. Italy? Italy, for sure, man. It was it was an incredible course. Like, everything was perfect. Everything's like cookie, shade, cut. And like, the jobs were so nice. I was having a lot of fun. Just just training on them, man. It was like, so much fun. Just being able to toss switch balls on a fat job that... Yeah, just on a fat jump, you just float everything out. Um, and yeah, dude, like, you see the videos from those places, and it looks like everything's, like, perfectly, like, perfectly taken care of, like, perfectly raked, perfectly cut, and just, like, per picture perfect. Yeah, man. That was the competition of the year, too. Like, it, it's so nice, and, like, at the bottom, they have this little, like, these huts, right? You, you got free beer, free wine, free wine. What? Wine. Yeah, man, like, if you're not comp, you, you get hooked up. Okay, well, I'm coming to Europe, and I'm definitely going to have to check this out, even if I'm visiting. Spectating. Well, do you get a lot of training, did you get a lot of training time? Or? Yeah, we get two, two to three days, usually. Oh, that's good. That's tough. Lots of training. Yeah, that's sick. What's the coolest place you've gone for skiing this now, then? Because obviously you went to Europe a couple times last year, so that's got to probably beat most of them. Yeah, I think... Uh I think Italy, again, man, I've never been to a ski like that with the scenery and stuff. Yeah. Sounds family actually also really cool. It's in that little town. It's a lot of cool places in Europe, man. For there, sure. Dude, there is. I'm going to try to get out there next year, even if it's just a ski for me. But I, it just looks like it, something that has to happen. Yeah. Yeah. It definitely is something that needs to happen, man. It, it's a really cool experience. Yeah, it would be so sick. Um, all right, well, last question. I'll let you go. You can give Judy your office back. <laughs> um, oh, so I basically ask every guest this, uh, but what's what's the future look like? Where do you want to uh, where do you want to go? Where do you see yourself in five years, man? Or five years less, anywhere like that? But what's the what's five the game plan? Years. Five years. We'll go five years. I'm I'll be I'll be 22, 23 ish. So yep. oh. Yeah, uh, full time, I guess. Yeah, skiing so full I'll time. Be traveling, competing on the Canadian team still. I, I'm pretty much just gonna follow my dream of skiing for as long as I can until you know the body gives up on me or it's just time to call it quits. You know. Well, that's that's the way most of us want to see it happening, man. And hopefully it does happen that way, dude. Do you see yourself competing in X Games and stuff by that time, five years from now? Because five years is a lot of time. So, you can do a lot of shit in five years, man. Trust me. Oh, yeah, I know. Yeah, I've done a lot in one year, man. Imagine what you can do in five. So is that something you see yourself doing? Because also the Olympics will be coming around in five years. Obviously, that's on. That's something you'd like to be a part of. Oh, it would be. And it would be a treat to have to be there. Do you see any video parts or any uh, urban or anything like that in those five years? Or are you kind of more focusing on slope and then maybe after? I've never actually thought of really like pursuing the ur urban part. I know, like I've seen, they're, they're so gnarly nowadays, and like the, the level of scene that goes into them is like way in like a, a full season. Like it's so easy to get injured in something like urban, you oh. know. But yeah, I would definitely love to make like maybe not a part, but I I definitely still be doing some urban scene here and there with the homies, you know. Yeah, and even just like uh like an overall like. Um, ski porn or whatever, just like a full, a full edit, a couple urban shots, a couple backcountry shots, some, some park bangers and shit like that. Thanks, sir. Yeah, for sure, dude. And then, uh, I need any ideal sponsors for that? You're gonna be working with Red Bull? Is that, is that on the fucking radar? Or am I gonna hook you up with Bang Energy? Man, give me Bang Energy, bro. I, I dude. Don't, I don't see Red Bull in my future. I'm more of a banger. You're more of a bang energy guy. Dude, I had my first bang energy yesterday at an eight hour drive home from Maximize. Dude. 
I, I had my first bang energy on the way home yesterday from Maximize, eight hour drive, and I was like, I gotta get going. It's like liquid cocaine, man. It gets you. It gets you. You're gonna make that drive happen. Really? Yeah. It, it, it works out. Well, how much coffee you drink? Uh, considering how much coffee I have, it works very well. I, I would I would highly suggest it. Like if I was about to do a quad cork, I would slam two or three of those, have a little mini heart attack on the in run, and then just let it go. <laughs> hey, I'm surprised, man. Yeah. Like I, I have like a, a coffee in the morning, and I'm freaking sweating. Like I'm sweating. Yeah. Like, I'm sweating. Boosts me, man. <laughs> it does, man. Especially when you stay away from the caffeine for a little bit. Like if you only have one coffee a day, or even less than that, you really do notice it. I've been oh, trying yeah, to cut back, too. but it pushes you through the day sometimes when you need it, right? Yeah, exactly, man. I'm on my second one right now, but I was up at five thirty today because my girlfriend wanted to watch the sunrise. I was up at four, four fifty today. <laughs> for She's no... late, so it's like PM for you right now. Yeah, dude, no reason at all. Like I was driving home, is like I air, I bagged all day at Maximize, uh, finished at like two, and then. I had to drive eight hours home, got home at like 8.39, and then uh, then I had a bunch of stuff to plan because I'm running a little student odd jobs business, so I got like to plan some employees, got to plan some work, so I was up to like 12 planning that shit, and then I woke up at five, 4.50, fuck man, it's been, it's only like what, tw- we're recording this at 1, and it's been a long day already, man, <laughs> I'm ready for a power nap. <laughs> yeah. Man. Dude, you're just a unit, man. The kid is a unit, dude. I'm like, I'm uh, I'm getting into it, man. I'm starting to get shit, more shit done, more shit done each day. Finding new ways to get more shit done and be more productive. But the problem is, I keep there's, I find each time I do something like that, I find more things that interest me, and I just got way too much shit going on that it's like I'm like half ass, not half assing, but I don't have enough time to commit to everything. So we got. Either find somebody to take it over, or, or like help me out with it, or just fucking ditch it. Yeah. Are you still doing your uh, MMA? Um. Yeah. All the gyms have been closed down, and the one I usually go to is in Barrie. So I usually go to the one in Barrie. Um. I usually go to the one in Barrie. What in the winter when I'm living in Barrie, just skiing. But there's a jiu-jitsu place that opened up in Perry Sound, and they're doing a little bit of striking now and stuff, so I've been doing that. Uh, but they're closed right now because of COVID, and they can't open up, so. I've just been doing some shit in my basement, but, yeah. I wish, dude, I want to... I want to get in a fight, man. I want I want some more fights. I want some... It, it interests me. I would love to... I would love to have some fights down the line. I would love to rock up to a contest, just beat the shit from, uh, from my... I had an A fight before, the week before. Just fucking limp onto the slope course. Ready to go. Oh, incredible. Yeah. Anyways, man. The fights, um, yeah. The fights. The fights that were just uh, on a couple of days ago. UFC 251. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was good. I liked, I liked all the fights. I didn't. Did you watch it? No, I didn't. No. The last, the last fight with uh, um, Usman and Masvidal was... It was alright, but it was kind of a boring fight. Other than that, it was a really good card. It was super sick. But yeah, I've been watching. I've been watching all the fights. So anybody who wants to watch fights online, go to crackstreams.com. And that's what I use. I can just you just stream it for free. It doesn't give your computer that many viruses, so you're set. Dude, it's been such a blessing because I couldn't find a streaming site, and then some random guy told me to use Crack Streams. Haven't had a problem with it in the last year. A year. A year, bro. I've been crack screen, using crack streams since the beginning of beginning of the winter. So not quite a year, but a long time. Consistency right there, man. Dude, it is, bro. They just don't take it down. But there's like two or three ones, so if they take one down, you just go to the next one. Crack streams. That's it. All right, I'm, I'll end this podcast right here, Noah. Um, thanks for coming on, man. All right. So before we end off this podcast, you delicate clam rams. I hope you guys enjoyed it just as much as I did. Noah's an awesome dude. He's a young up-and-comer in the game, and the kid kills it, man. The kid is on. Uh, he's a really good friend of mine. He loves to send just about as much as I do, or even more than I do. So, yeah, it's a super good and a super great guy in general. If you guys haven't had the opportunity to go like or rate the podcast wherever you're listening to it on, I would really appreciate it. We can help grow the podcast. I can get cooler guests on for you guys. Uh, hopefully, I can get some funding behind the podcast, and then we can really get into it, get a little better 
a little better camera quality, a little better audio quality because right now we're using the crack camera, which is not ideal. So if you guys like and rate it or leave a comment on wherever you're listening to it, iTunes, Spotify, um, Podbean, or if you're just listening to it on YouTube, watching the video, if you give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already, that'd be amazing. And yeah, help the kid out and the kid will help you guys out. All right, with that being said, I'll see you in the next podcast next Tuesday. Yep, next Tuesday. Cheers, love you all. Mwah.